Hi viewers, this week's video is about Sapphire. How to tell if Sapphire is real or fake with simple tests. A simple tutorial about a yeah about a test with oil to help you identifying your blue stones or to tell if Sapphire is real or fake. You see a lot of blue stones here on the right hand side some green stones we use as an example and a red stone we also use as an example. Natural corundum comes in a wide variety of colors. Corundum has a hardness of 9 on the most hardness scale and is directly below the diamond which is the hardest material on the list with a 10. Red corundum like this piece here is better known as ruby and all other colors are called sapphire of which blue sapphire is by far the best known. Synthetic corundum is identically in all properties to natural corundum for example the specific weight according to the density, the hardness etc. It is therefore impossible to distinguish between them. So what can we do? In general one can say that in natural sapphires are more liquid inclusions and in synthetic sapphires are more gas bubbles. But it is not that easy. There are many specific inclusions with tiny differences and this is best examined with a microscope and a good database of examples. I can highly recommend the Hyperion inclusion search gallery by Lotus Gemology. They have hundreds of examples for inclusions in sapphire and in synthetic material. If you have one, check out this database or in general if you want to learn a little bit more about inclusions in gemstones, go and check them out. The link is in my video description down below when we can use the inclusions for identifying a sapphire if it is natural or a synthetic corundum. Let's take a closer look at the color itself and the zoning. We are using the oil because it helps us. It helps us to take a closer look in the stone. Oils have higher refractive indexes than the air and they are closer to the refractive index of a gemstone. That's why we become a much better look inside the stone. In my case, I have a camellia oil and the refractive index of this camellia oil is about 1.47 to about 1.48. The best is you had a clear oil and a colorless oil. So try to find a clear and colorless oil or near colorless oil. So uh, you become a very, very good view inside your stone. What we are doing is we use this oil here today as I used it in my ultimate emerald tutorial and in my ultimate ruby tutorial. I will give you some more information later why we use the color zoning or the color to identify the stone. It is easy because uh, the color zones are created by so-called growth stripes. In the case of natural sapphire the substances are deposited rhythmically in the hexagonal prism. That means we find straight stripes angled up to a hexagon. And synthetic corundum also grow in layers, but as a body with curved layers, pure shapes. I don't want to overcomplicate the episode. So let's focus on the specific zoning of sapphire or corundum. And if you need more information about the different types of synthetic materials or simulants, more tips and tricks to tell if your sapphire or ruby is real or fake, be sure to check out the Ultimate Ruby tutorial. Everything that is shown there also applies to sapphire, since uh, both are corundum. We remember same material, different colors. Okay, let's uh, start with the test and a few examples. You need a tweezer, you need your stone, you need oil and a good light. I'm using my light table here. It is uh, a very comfortable way to work with oil and stones. Now I hope you have a good view and yeah what we see is we have a little bit of dirt in it because I used it 
very often to identify gemstones with this simple trick here. I would say let's start direct with a natural example of a blue sapphire. So what we see here is a very very good example of a sapphire because here in the air we can see we have color zonings, we have grow patterns, visible grow patterns. Often it is not so good visible like in this one here. Often we have a... let me pick up another example. Often in the air and when we look from the front we have very homogenic color and in this case it is a little bit dark and due to the transmitted light not good visible but uh, you know what I mean. Our gemstones are usually have a very homogenic color when we look straight to the crown in a good light and um, yeah. Now let's put this specimen in oil and you will see direct we have a much better view inside the stone. Uh, maybe I can get a little bit closer that we or you can see it a little bit better. A super good example of a natural sapphire or natural corundum, natural blue corundum with trade zonings, angular zonings. This is typical for sapphire and that's what we're looking for today. Here you can see it very good. Turn it around. Oh look here we can see it. Very very good that we have here. Hexagonal growth patterns in this specimen. Here on the photo you can see it much better. And now um, let's go now. As a gem cutter I can say we cutters are usually try to set the best color at area of a stone near close to the pavilion so uh, the color reflects from the pavilion all over the stone. It is not a perfect cutted gemstone here in this case. Now I have to use a red example. It's a synthetic corundum. I hope you can see this here on the camera. I think I show it to you on a photo where I explain you what you have to pay attention to. Uh, my camera is not good enough to uh, show you this here now. It is uh, here. Here we can see it a little bit. And the cutter set the curved zoning in the shorter side so it is much harder to detect that this line is curved. But uh, let me show you this on a photo so you can see it much better. Well, here we see it very good. I add an angle parallel to the stone for you that you can see we have curved stripes. Try to focus on this both parts of the stone and with the help of a straight line we see that the growth stripes are curved. By the way we see also synthetic stones has inclusions. And here is a better example from the Ruby tutorial. Here you can see that these stripes are curved. I will pick up some more examples for you of natural corundum so we become better feeling for the angular and straight zoning. Okay, and here is a bigger one. Let's take a closer look at some examples of angular and straight zoning. And as I said, the oil helps us with this higher refractive index to explore the inner life of a stone. And here we see the straight zonings and also here. So we had an angular zoning in this stone. Also a good indicator is the color itself. Pretty often the color is not homogenic. We have brighter parts, we have darker parts. Also this is good indicator for a natural gemstone. When we take a look at the synthetic one we see we have these intense strong homogenic color all over the stone and that is always a very good indicator also for the synthetic materials. Here look when you move the stone a little bit it can help to find such angular zonings. This one is a perfect example here of three 
straight zonings and they are connected to angular zonings. This is a super good example of what you have to pay attention to. If you see such patterns here and the lines or the stripes are straight and angular, it is one of the best indicator with this method here to tell if a sapphire is real or fake. Simuland is a good example. Here I have to take a, a green stone, but they are also available in blue and red. This is a diet quartz. These diet quartz are available in green, in blue, in red. Often they use it as a simulant for jade in the Asian room and here in the Europe and American and all rest of the world. It is often used as a simulant for emerald. Same is uh, with ruby and sapphire when they are blue or red. This uh, quartz is dyed and we can see that it is dyed because we have a strong and intense concentration of the color in the cracks. You see, when we have a bigger crack, it is extreme dark green and the smaller cracks are also more tinted than the other parts of the stone, which means most of the color is simply in these cracks here. Also in blue available, keep attention, be careful if you have a stone like this, where we see we have also color zonings in this in this uh, piece but uh, these the complete structure here all of these cracks filled or yeah filled with intense dark colors is the best indicator to uh, tell that this is only a simulant and here we have a very nice yeah sapphire or not check this out okay first what we see is we have a very homogenic color but we also have some inclusions here in this piece so let's pick it up and check what it is oh wait what was this check this out i hope you can see this in the camera now uh, 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 uh. yeah the upper part is red i'm sure this is a piece of corundum because we have a blue yeah maybe hydrothermal quartz or something like this which shows us it is an assembled stone it is a simulant fake often they put a thin layer of synthetic material on top which they try to imitate because of electronic equipment people use a gem tester which makes a thermal test gem indicators or gem identifiers shows you it is sapphire and people think oh i have a natural sapphire wonderful but uh, often it is single land or fake like this. So keep attention on this. Always be careful if a stone looks too perfect, try to watch and explore the stone from every direction and every angle. And you see when you find something like this, you know it is just single land or a fake. I will show you some more quick examples. Here we have a big one and what we see here is, yeah, we, sorry, let me make a little bit more space here for you. Now we have some bubbles in the oil. It's also important to make sure you know that uh, bubbles are in the stone or in the oil. And especially in this example here, yeah, it looks like we have more darker, more brighter parts. But we also see here these inclusions. When we go closer, we see that these inclusions are only bubbles. Sometimes bubbles are also an indicator that we have two different materials assembled. And check this out. It is only a thin layer of blue adhesive between yeah, two colorless materials. I've seen a lot of emerald fakes like this where they use a piece of quartz with inclusions in it, a green layer of adhesive and a colorless barrel or something like this on top. So uh, always be careful and check your stones and oil if it is possible and you can explore such yeah, 
strange things here like this. And a little extra tip, take a closer look at the girdle by using a loop or a camera with zoom and pretty often you can see the layer of adhesive between the crown and the play. When I start this video I don't want to make it too complicated but uh, I have one example which is a good example for glass because often we have glass as a simulant and glass can be identified also due to gas bubbles, a relatively homogenic color and you see also have curved stripes in it. This only as a quick example it's a green one, it's a simulant for tourmaline or emerald. But as we all know glass is also available in blue. This test is relatively easy. Try to focus on the zoning and on the color. That helps you a lot to identify your stones. If you want to have more information, especially hear about some more simulants, some more natural examples of corundum, synthetic corundum, be sure to uh, check the Ultimate Ruby tutorial. It is also linked in the video description. You will find a link on the end card of my video. I hope this uh, was a little bit easier, understandable, for especially for beginners. Don't take a look at the inclusions, it is really complicated, you need a microscope for it or identify them and uh, yeah, this is a test which helps me a lot to identify gemstones or natural versus fake stones. Hope it helps a lot of people with their gemstones. In the Ultimate Emerald and in the Ultimate Ruby tutorial I have some more tips. In this both tutorials I take a closer look at the shape. So uh, you can learn what you have to pay attention to on the shape of a gemstone. A shape can tell us also a lot. In general, you know, this is gem cutting channel, but uh, I also try to share tips, helpful tips, easy tips for you to help you with your gemstones. If you are new, please explore my channel. You will find a lot of gem cutting videos, faceting videos. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Yeah, share it with your friends. Help them with their gemstones. Show this trick, share this trick. Hopefully we're all not getting scammed because also scammers are update their methods. Thank you very much for watching up to this point. Have a nice week. Bye bye.